In today's video, I'm going to show you how to edit dull weather photos to produce stunning black and white images. I shot the image I'm starting with on a recent trip to the Roaches where I made this video about shooting in dull weather. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link to it in the YouTube video details below. For this video, I'm processing the image in Lightroom, but you can use the same approach with most RAW converters. The immediate problem I see in this image is that most of the details hidden because it's underexposed. Before I can get a real idea of how to process this scene, I need to correct the underexposure. I'll do that by increasing the exposure slider to around 1.5. Now I can see the detail in the image, but it's blowing out the sky. I could recover the sky using the highlight slider, but that makes the foreground look a little dull and flat. Instead, I'm going to select and adjust the sky using a linear gradient. You often need to make more localised adjustments with dull weather photos because it helps to create impact. Now because I'm using the new version of Lightroom, all the selection tools are bundled under this masking icon. If you're using an older version of Lightroom, the same tools have individual icons below the histogram. The best way to select the sky would be using the new sky selection tool, but that isn't available in older versions of Lightroom. So instead, I'll use a linear gradient and then use it to draw the selection over the sky. But if I use this as it is to reduce the exposure of the sky, it's going to darken the trees, which I don't want. To fix the problem, I'm going to use the luminance range selection tool to remove the trees from the linear selection. After clicking the subtract button, I'll select the luminance range option. I can then use the luminous range controls to remove the darker tones of the trees from the selection of the sky. I won't be able to make this perfect, but it will be much better than not removing the trees at all. Now I can move the exposure slider to minus 1.5 to remove the increased exposure I applied to the entire image at the start. This darkens the sky, but it leaves it looking flat, which makes the image appear boring. It's important when processing dull weather photography to black and white that you enhance the detail. This helps to attract and retain the interest of the viewer as it helps them to look around the image. For this image, I'm going to enhance the sky using the dehaze slider, which I'll increase to plus 25. I'll also increase the clarity slider to around 20, which seems to produce a reasonable looking sky. Now let's zoom into the tree branches at 100% because I expect the selection will appear quite poor in that area. The new tools in Lightroom are great, but they're no replacement for luminosity masking in the likes of Photoshop. Now that I can see the effect of my adjustments, I want to refine the selection using the luminance range controls. I find it easier to make this sort of refinement to selections after applying adjustments to the image. Now that's improved things, but it's left the area looking a little bit too light. I'm going to ignore that for the moment, because once I've converted the image to black and white, it might not look so obvious. There are a couple of ways to convert the image to black and white in Lightroom, and most RAW converters have similar controls. Possibly the easiest way is to select one of the black and white colour profiles supported by my camera. You'll find these in the profile browser in Lightroom. The downside to using a camera profile is that you can't control how individual colours respond to black and white conversions. You can see here that the black and white controls have been disabled because I've used a black and white profile. Because I want to use these controls, I'm going to switch to using the Adobe Monochrome profile, which works with these black and white sliders. Now in the black and white panel, I can darken and lighten areas based on individual colours in the image. This helps to produce separation of areas in the image, which is important when processing dull weather landscape photography. First, I'll move the blue slider down to minus 70 to darken the sky. I then want to lighten some of the foreground detail, which falls in the yellow and green colour range. By moving those sliders to plus 70, it lightens the detail in the areas. I can then further enhance the foreground by moving the orange slider to plus 30 to lighten the bracken. The only thing now is that the pine needles on the trees are looking just a little bit too dark. Those seem to respond to the aqua slider, which I'll increase to plus 50. Now that I've made the black and white conversion, let's go back to the controls in the basic panel. The problem you find when converting dull weather photos to black and white is that you don't have enough contrast. This lack of contrast makes the landscape look flat and uninspiring. 
To improve this image, I'm applying a contrast adjustment of plus 20. I also want to point out that I've already been experimenting with the adjustments for this image. The plus 20 contrast adjustment is specific to this image and it won't necessarily work for other images. There aren't any magical numbers to dial in to produce a great black and white. You need to use your own judgement when editing each photo. I'm now going to reduce the highlight slider by minus 20 as the image is looking just a little bit too light. But I'll then open the shadows with a plus 20 adjustment. Before I go much further with these adjustments, I can see that the shadows are becoming blocked up in some areas. Because I want to add a vignette to the image, I'll do that now using the effects panel. Having added a vignette, I can see the image probably looks better without the shadow adjustment, so I'll remove it. I can also see that the sky is starting to look particularly flat and boring. The way that I'll fix this is to create a new linear selection of the sky and apply localised adjustments. Notice that I'm starting this much nearer to the top of the frame and I'm blending it over a larger transition area. I'll then darken the exposure of the sky and increase the contrast to produce more definition across the sky. Remember, your eye is drawn to detail which creates interest in dull weather photos. When the sky is flat, the viewer's eye will wander around without being drawn to anything in particular. To create this interest in the sky, I'm going to use the exposure slider set to minus 0.5 and I'll increase the contrast slider to plus 30. I'll also increase the clarity slider to 20, which helps to emphasise the detail. We now have areas of light and dark in the sky, which helps to hold the viewer's interest. Now let's create more areas of detail in the scene. Remember, when photographing in dull, overcast weather conditions, there aren't any strong shadows, which can make the landscape appear flat and boring. After converting the image to black and white, we need to emphasise some areas of the scene, which we can do with dodging and burning. I'll start by using the brush tool to dodge the foreground area to create the feeling of light falling onto it. Then I'll add another brush selection to dodge the pine trees, which are just a little bit too dark. I can then also increase the contrast of that selection to plus 15 and the clarity to plus 20. This just makes the detail in those areas stand out a little bit more to draw the viewer's eye. The image is now working much better, but I want to enhance the bracken in the foreground to make it appear that there's light falling onto it. I can do this by adding a radial selection to the area I want to enhance. I'll then use that to increase the exposure by around plus 30 and the contrast by plus 10. I just want to check the shadows now as they're starting to appear blocked up which I can see also on the left of the histogram. I can fix the clipping using the black slider to recover the problem areas. Now depending on your taste you may want to add additional processing in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. Here's the image after I've made further adjustments in Photoshop. Compare that to the original image and you can see a significant transformation. If you'd like to see another example of editing dull weather photos, watch this video next. And remember, it's only by practicing and experimenting that you'll find what works for you.